What is going on, folks? This can't be real. Two videos in two weeks? Say qua? Yes, welcome to the new What Is series. I know, I know. This ain't part five, Bri. Listen, it's coming, but it's a monster of a video. There's so many animations and illustrations and theory that I really don't want to skip out on. So enjoy these little guys for now as I get back into the swing of things. And if we can get to 30 million likes by next week, I'll release part five a lot earlier than 2035, I promise like 2034. All right, so this series is simply just going to be answering what is stuff. We'll be starting off with the basics and getting more advanced as we go. If you guys already know all this stuff, there may be something that you see in the level that might interest you. So I'll upload the projects to GitHub free of charge so you can just grab your fork and bon appetite. With that being said, these will be a bit shorter and to the point with the exception of this video, with not as many animations as you guys are used to with the exception of this video, because one, making the tiniest meme just to make you guys laugh literally takes more effort than making the whole lesson including the map design, and two, I have way more important and useful videos planned for you guys that I think would be a huge help to your game dev life than a video about booleans. Speaking of booleans, welcome to episode one of the What Is series, and today we answer, you guessed it, what is boolean? A boolean is one of our simplest variable types. In the 19th century, a mathematician named George Boole, I'm kidding, you guys don't care about that, a boolean has one of two values. In programming, it's either one or zero, and it's often translated to true or false. The variable is typically named in a way where it forms a yes or no question, since that's basically what they're used for, to answer yes or no questions. You'll see them used with branches all the time. For example, in our replication series, we went over the switch has authority node, the SHA node. I just made that up, but we could definitely make it a thing. The SHA node is just a branch that takes a boolean, and if this boolean is true, it returns true, which returns authority, or false if it's false, which sends the execution through the remote pin. This node basically takes this and pastes it here. This is literally what happens. It's just that macros make it easier to do certain repetitive things over and over again, so we use them a lot. But if you don't know much about macros, don't worry, we're gonna be getting into macros in a later episode. If you've seen me use booleans, you'll notice that they'll have question marks in the variable name. Not something that you have to do, especially because in real programming, you would never do this because it's an invalid variable name, but luckily with blueprints, they let you. And during compile, Unreal Engine corrects it for you so everything can still work. But I have the extra benefit of reading my blueprints like I'm speaking English, such as has ammo, is shooting, is subscribed, has broken the thumb, has turned on that ding dong, has shared, has trust issues. Each one of these booleans can be referred to as a condition, and the branch node is the equivalent of an if-else statement that you find in programming. If you've ever seen programming at all, you should be pretty familiar with this syntax. So if this condition is true, this logic will be executed. If it's false, then this will be skipped and the false logic will run. Just like our branch, if true, we run this code. If false, we run this other code. However, this limits us to a single condition. What if we wanted to check for multiple conditions? Well, we could just keep adding branches and checking over and over again, but that's not practical and we could end up with a mile long stairs of branches or a tower of if statements. Also, if we wanted to come back to a previous branch or function, it could get even messier and very repetitive. Let's look at a simple example. So if our player is subscribed, we say, I love you. If not, we check if they've broken the thumb. And if so, we say, I love you. If not, we then check to see if they've turned on the ding dong, and if so, we say, I love you. And if not, we check if they've shared the video, and if so, we say, I love you. And if not, we say, bruh. The equivalent of this in programming would look something like this. If is subscribed, print string, I love you, else if has broken, and so on and so forth. You guys get the point. You can see how repetitive it can get. Some of you may have heard about the DRY acronym, which stands for don't repeat yourself. This is not only true for booleans, but true for every aspect of programming. Anytime Anytime you find yourself doing the copy pasta finger dance all over the place, chances are you're doing it wrong, so stop. We can make our lives much easier by using something called a logical operator. Don't worry, they're not as scary as they sound, just wait until you get to the last one, then you can be scared. Logical operators are simply extra English words that we can use to combine conditions, like the word and or or. See, it's not that hard. There's just a few more words that we can't forget about, like the NAND, NOR, XOR, and XNOR. Yes, not so English, but trust me, they're not as scary as they sound. Yet. I've created a simple map that's going to make this lesson interactive and a bit more fun to learn, so make sure you download this project from GitHub if you want to get this sweet light bulb with an overkill of material slots. Look, it even has a filament. Now before we start, there's one really important thing that is always on my mind and in my heart of hearts, and that is to make sure you guys are happy, and there's an extremely easy way to do that. We simply just start off by making sure that you guys are subscribed. Guaranteed happiness. 
Once we're done that, we'll cover logical operators, just like we talked about, and we'll be going over the AND, NAND, OR, NOR, XOR, and then we're going to create one of our own gates that doesn't exist yet in blueprints, the XNOR. Spoiler, it's not that hard. After that, I'll send out an extremely friendly, politically correct, non-offensive and inclusive reminder to make sure you guys are subscribed by threatening to shut off your internet. Then I'll backpedal so the sensitive viewers out there don't go on tilt because I love you guys. But then again, watching people go on tilt is pure gold, so tilt away, noobs. And then we'll get into some easier stuff, like comparison operators. You guys have probably already seen these and used them and know what they do already, but we'll cover them anyway because I simply wanted my map to be symmetrical, so why not? And then what? By golly, is that a way to support your all-time favorite Unreal Engine YouTuber? Well, spit my drink and slap my sister. Ah, uh, yes. Finally, we'll end with the most complex thing you'll ever learn in your Unreal career, hands down. You guys probably think I'm kidding, but this one time, I am not. This is one of the most important things in Unreal, and there's a lot of things that you simply would not be able to do without this node. One could argue that every single game ever created relies on this, and if it wasn't for this one special node, those games would simply just not exist today. So watch till the end, you don't want to miss this. Alright, so I've set up this wall actor to expose an operation enum. Don't worry if you don't know what an enum is yet, we'll get into that in a later episode. For now, let's just focus on these balls. We've got two balls that feed this bulb and make it light out when certain conditions are true. This is not kid friendly. Hello writers, new script please! I have a simple function that detects when one of the balls is interacted with. Don't worry about how these walls are being built, just focus on the balls. Depending on which ball we touch, the corresponding boolean will flip. Left ball is boolean A, right ball is boolean B, and when things get a little bit weird and there happens to be an extra ball, we'll call it C. These booleans are used in this magical function that switches on the type of operation and it simply passes those two or three booleans into the proper comparison or logical operator and sets the result boolean to that value. This result boolean is later used to determine if the bulb should be on or not. True will turn the light bulb on and false will keep it off. I've also added a description to help you quickly know which balls you need to touch to turn this guy on. Really guys? Come on! Now that this can't get any more awkward, let's take a look at our first operator, the AND gate. You'll hear the word gate used for logical operators because they kind of work like gatekeepers. The gatekeeper determines if someone can pass or not based on certain conditions. If conditions are met, the gate opens and allows the person to pass. Likewise with logical operators, also referred to as logic gates, if the conditions are true, they allow the code to continue executing, otherwise the gate stays closed. To kick off this new series and help with today's demonstration, we have none other than the fan's all-time favorite, Yoren Fighter! Okay, so if we interact with boolean B, it'll flip the true, and since boolean A and boolean B are now both true, you'll see that the bulb lights up. Note we only have two inputs here, but this works the same way with more than two inputs. We can have a thousand of these connected to this bulb, and all of them would have to be true for the bulb to light up, because that's what the AND gatekeeper expects. As soon as one of them failed to be true, the gate would close, and the bulb would turn off. Hopefully that makes sense, and if it doesn't, don't worry, it's gonna make sense here as we keep going, so let's just move on to our first non-English word, the NAND gate. This looks very similar to the AND, but it has an N in front of it, and the N stands for NOT, so this can be read as NOT AND which basically means the exact opposite behavior of the AND node. So we know that if any input is off for the AND, the light doesn't work, meaning the only way this gate is going to open and allow full pass through is if all conditions are true. Okay, so if the gate opens when all conditions are true and the NAND gate does the opposite, that means if all conditions are true on this one, the gate should be closed. And yes, you're right. The flip side of that is anytime the condition is false on the AND, the light is off. And if the NAND does the opposite, it means that anytime any condition is false, the light will be turned on instead. Let me introduce you to a truth table. A truth table is straight up facts that don't care about anyone's feelings and it just tells you the reality of our situation and I think that's exactly what we need right now. So let's plot out our AND gate using a truth table. We know that true false is the same thing as yes, no, or on, off, which is the same thing as one or zero when it comes to programming. First we plug in all our combinations that we can possibly have for our inputs. So we can have both booleans be off or zero, we can also have a off and b on, we can also have a on and b off, and finally we can have both on. And now we run the test. When both are off, the result is off. When a is off and b on, result is off or zero. When a is on and b is off, result is zero. When a and b are both on, the result is one. 
So in theory, the NAND should be the exact opposite of the AND, so let's plug in our values and mark them off as we go. Instead of the results being 0, 0, 0, 1, it should be 1, 1, 1, 0. Let's test it. Both OFF returns ON, A OFF and B ON returns ON, A ON, B OFF returns ON, and finally when both A and B are ON, the result is FALSE, which turns the light OFF. All right, so I think you guys are either A, smart enough to understand this, or B, my illustrations are so OP that it's impossible to not understand this stuff. Speaking of or, you see what I did there? Yeah, it's clever, isn't it? Yeah, patreon.com slash Toma. I'm kidding. I promised myself I wouldn't be shoving the Patreon stuff down people's throats as soon as I made one. You guys know I'm not a sellout like that. Okay, all right, cool. The OR operation checks to see if any inputs are true. If we get out our truth table and plot all the possible input conditions, the OR gate basically says if I see a 1, I get lit. Knowing that, if I was to guess what the outputs would look like, it would be 0 for the first guy since both are off, and the rest of the combinations have at least one of the booleans turned to true, if not both, so it would be 1, 1, 1. Let's try it out. So both off, 0, yep, only B on returns true, yep. Only A on returns true, yep, and both on returns true as well, bingo! And similar to the AND operation that you saw earlier, the OR has a corresponding NOT OR, which is simply the opposite of the OR. The OR would be true if any input was on, so that means that the NOT OR, or NOR, will work only if none of the inputs are on. In other words, all inputs must be set to false. So let's plot this out on our truth table. We know the OR is 0, 1, 1, 1. So the NOT OR, if we were to take an educated guess, would be 1, 0, 0, 0. So let's test it out. And yup, bingo, uh-huh, and yahoo. Moving on to the XOR, which is short form for exclusive OR. The XOR looks for differing inputs. It wants one to be true and the other one to be false. Otherwise, it simply won't work. Now, I've added a third input here just to help us differentiate between the results a bit and I'll show you what I mean in a sec. Just an aside, these logic gates are actually used in circuits in electronics. So just because I have a three input XOR gate or an eight input XOR gate does not necessarily mean this is how you're supposed to use it. People that are much smarter than myself know how to use gates efficiently. So if you're asking yourself, when the heck would I ever use a three input XOR gate? Sometimes the answer is, Never, because it just may be impractical for your game. The easiest way to remember the results of the exclusive OR is that anytime the sum of the true inputs is odd, the result will return true. I know that might sound a bit confusing, and there's a reason that I have three inputs on this one. So let's take a look at a two input truth table for the XOR gate first. So we end up with something like this. You may look at this and say, oh, if the inputs are the same, then the result is false. And although you're right, that's not exactly true. So let's add that third input and see. Now we have to fill out all the combinations. A quick and easy way to do this instead of doing it manually and seeing what combination you used or didn't use is to just know that booleans only have two possible values. So if we start populating the value of C first, we can start with 0, we'll go 1, and then 0, and then 1. Then we'll do the same thing with B, except we'll switch after every two rows instead. So 0, 0, switch, 1, 1, switch, and we'll just copy and paste this like this because we're programmers and we're lazy. And finally, we'll do A, and you could probably guess, instead of switching every two rows, we're going to switch every four rows. So 0, 0, 0, 0, switch, 1, 1, 1, 1, you get the point. So you can go through and check all the combinations, but I guarantee you it's going to be right. Every single combination is going to be unique, and this is all you got to do. So let's just move on. I've got the results split up like this because this is how gates work. You're going to do one operation at a time. You're not doing them all at once. So first. We we fill out our two input XOR results and we know that XOR is looking for two different inputs for the result to return true. So these two are same, same, different, 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 same, same. Sweet. And now we could do the same thing but we take our results from the first XOR and use our third input to come up with the results for the three input XOR. So the first row is the same which means it's not exclusive so this would be off different, which would make this true or one different again. This is not exclusive. So false, exclusive, true, same, false, same, false. And these last two are different. So true. Now for my real sweaties, I created a 256 row eight input XOR truth table. And you can see how the results start becoming absolutely useless as you add more complexity with a whopping eight inputs. And the only time the light is off is twice out of 256 times. Really? If you ask me, that's a bunch of useless results. That's a lot of logic happening just to get a false result 0.78% of the time, while the 
other 99.2% of the time, it's going to return true. And if you find yourself doing this on the game development side in your own project, chances are there's probably a better way to set up your logic. All right, so just before we move on to our last operator, let's take a look at how I set up this three input exclusive or. This probably makes way more sense now that we've went through the truth table exercises. So here it is. The result of A and B in this XOR node is then compared with C in this other XOR node, and that gives us our final result. So if A is zero and B is zero, then the result will be zero. And if this result is zero, but C is set to one, then they differ, so this result will be one. Cool, so let's move on to our XNOR. So you can probably guess what this will look like. If the XOR returns true when an odd number of inputs are true, then it would be safe to assume that the XNOR, which is simply a not XOR, means it will return true when an even number of inputs are true. Yep, 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 yep. 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 All right, we're almost there. So if you guys got all that so far, you're breezing from here on in until you get to the end. But first, I have to ask you, did you do it? If not, do it now. Listen, this is not an OR gate. This is an AND gate. Smash, ding, break, and f I need a better saying for the share button. I haven't come up with anything yet, so don't judge me. I'm kidding about the internet part, but I'm not kidding about anything else. Like this sign right here, even though I always say never trust, your players, trust me, you're going to remember this one. Okay, on to our first comparison operator. Comparison operators do what their name says. They compare. If A equals B, the result will be true. So if we turn B on, boom, we've got light. The truth table for the equal operator looks something like this. We'll test it. Yep, 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 yep. Simple. The not equal, you guessed it. It's the exact opposite. Boom, bam, bum, bop. The greater than, yep. Zing, zang, zong, zap. Less than, vroom, vram, vrim, vrap. Greater than or equal, all right, I'm done with the sound effects. Notice how the greater than or equal has the exact opposite results of the less than. So basically, if you take the results of either the less than or the greater than or equal, and you not the result, you will get one or the other, kind of cool. Finally, the LTE, hashtag 5G, hashtag COVID conspiracy. You'll notice that the results of the less than equal is the exact opposite of, you guessed it, the greater than. Throwing a not on the results of either of these will return the results of the other. You might have noticed that Booleans don't actually have four of these comparison operators, and you are right, they don't. How could you say that true is greater than false or vice versa? They're just words. How do you compare words? Remember that Booleans are just ones and zeros, so all I did was simply take the Boolean values and convert them to an int, and then compare the int. You most likely may not need to compare Booleans like this, but I just wanted to show you, not because I care about whether you're going to use this or not, but like I said earlier, just really wanted my map to be symmetrical, and I got what I wanted. I really like that song. Tell out, tell out, tell out. You're a sellout, 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 you're a sellout. But alas, we're not done yet. Here we are, the monster we've all been dreading to face, but I do not want you guys to be scared of this. So please just take a deep breath and do not panic. You're not going to die. You'll be fine. Here we go. I'm kidding, this exclamation mark up here typically means not in programming, so this is just the not node, all it does is just invert whatever input you give it. <laughs> 